Hey guys, I was writing a script on this wiretapping issue when Vault 7 was released today, but I am so stunned that I wanted to focus on Vault 7, although these issues are related. I've linked a very informative Stefan Molyneux video about the wiretapping evidence in the description box below if you think that this is still tinfoil hattery. But with regards to Vault 7, the Wall Street Journal is saying that this is purported evidence, as are most other leftist outlets. But as we all know, WikiLeaks still has an impeccable record for accuracy. Also, Edward Snowden tweeted a few hours ago, still working through the publication, but what WikiLeaks has here is genuinely a big deal, looks authentic. What makes this look real? Program and office names, such as the JQJ IOC Crip series, are real. Only a cleared insider could know them. Okay, so what is Vault 7? According to the WikiLeaks press release, Vault 7 is a substantial collection of material about CIA activities obtained by WikiLeaks. Part 1 was released today, uh, was obtained recently, and covers through 2016. Details on other parts will be available at the time of their publication. WikiLeaks hasn't mined the best stories, and they are encouraging researchers everywhere to find them. And if you are successful, you can apply for early access to future parts. And I know I have some great researchers in my audience because of the help I got with former WikiLeaks dumps, so I really encourage you to do this if you're interested. This is also from the WikiLeaks press release. The first part of the series, Year Zero, comprises 8,761 documents and files from an isolated high-security network situated inside the CIA's Center for Cyber Intelligence in Langley, Virginia. Recently, the CIA lost control of the majority of its hacking arsenal, including malware, viruses, trojans, weaponized zero-day exploits, malware remote control systems, and associated documentation. This extraordinary collection, which amounts to more than several hundred million lines of code, gives its possessor the entire hacking capacity of the CIA. The archive appears to have been circulated among former U.S. government hackers and contractors in an unauthorized manner, one of whom has provided WikiLeaks with portions of the archive. The CIA's Remote Devices Branches Umbridge Group collects and maintains a substantial library of attack techniques stolen from malware produced in other states, including the Russian Federation. With Umbridge and related projects, the CIA can not only increase its number of attack types, but also misdirect attribution by leaving behind the fingerprints of the groups that the attack techniques were stolen from. Umbridge components cover keyloggers, password collections, webcam capture, data destruction, persistence, privilege escalation, stealth, antivirus avoidance, and survey techniques. So this means that they can misdirect a hacking source's location to appear to be from another location. They could even stage a Russian hack to provide the basis for a FISA court warrant. The press release also states that there are attacks against Samsung smart TVs, which developed in cooperation with the United Kingdom's MI5. After infestation, Weeping Angel places the target TV in a fake off mode so that the owner falsely believes the TV is off when it is on. In a fake off mode, the TV operates as a bug recording conversation in the room and sending them over the internet to a covert CIA server. As of October 2014, the CIA was also looking at infecting the vehicle control systems used by modern cars and trucks. The purpose of such controls is not specified, but it would permit the CIA to engage in nearly undetectable assassinations. The CIA's mobile device branch developed numerous attacks to remotely hack and control popular smartphones. Infected phones can be instructed to send the CIA the user's geolocation, audio, and text communication, as well as covertly activate the phone's camera and microphone. So basically, all of our devices are wide open. Um, every text and audio correspondence that we have are on the table, as are our cars. Even worse, it appears the Obama administration did not disclose vulnerabilities and devices to their manufacturers in order to retain their surveillance capabilities. In the wake of Edward Snowden's leaks about the NSA, the U.S. technology industry secured a commitment from the Obama administration that the executive would disclose on an ongoing basis, rather than hoard, serious vulnerabilities, exploits, bugs, or zero days to Apple, Google, Microsoft, and other U.S.-based manufacturers. Serious vulnerabilities not disclosed to the manufacturers place huge swaths of the population and critical infrastructures at risk to foreign intelligence or cyber criminals who independently discover or hear rumors of the vulnerability. If the CIA can discover such vulnerabilities, so can others. Year Zero documents show that the CIA breached the Obama administration's commitments. 
Many of the vulnerabilities used in the CIA's cyber arsenal are pervasive, and some may already have been found by rival intelligence agencies or cyber criminals. As an example, specific CIA malware revealed in Year Zero was able to penetrate, infest, and control both the Android phone and iPhone software that runs or has run presidential Twitter accounts. The CIA attacks the software by using undisclosed security vulnerabilities, zero days, possessed by the CIA. But if the CIA can hack these phones, then so can everyone else who has obtained or discovered the vulnerability. As long as the CIA keeps these vulnerabilities concealed from Apple and Google, who make the phones, they will not be fixed and the phones will remain hackable. The same vulnerabilities exist for the population at large, including the U.S. Cabinet, Congress, top CEOs, system administrators, security officers, and engineers. By hiding these security flaws from manufacturers like Apple and Google, the CIA ensures that it can hack everyone at the expense of leaving everyone hackable. So even though Vault 7 is trending, I saw a lot of people on Twitter that were saying this is nothing new and shouldn't surprise or alarm anyone. So what is the significance of all of this? Edward Snowden, who believes these documents to be real, said a few hours ago on Twitter, why is this dangerous? Because until closed, any hacker can use the security hole the CIA left open to break into any iPhone in the world. And in terms of Trump's wiretapping claim, he got out in front of this leak and shows the American people that he is ahead of the game and is going to be relentless in his efforts to expose the Obama administration's corruption. It appears to me that Trump was being monitored despite there being no legitimate evidence that he has anything but benign connections with Russia in order to preemptively develop this Russian narrative. The Obama administration then made it easier for the NSA to share data in an attempt to allow this narrative to flourish. I think this is going to be much worse than we anticipate. We have allowed the government to impose a full-blown surveillance state on us. And in the process, all of us are at heightened security risk, and all of our security agencies have been compromised. This means that our national security has also been compromised. All of the hackable information is most certainly in the hands of our enemies. But it also means that we can expose the CIA and NSA in unprecedented ways through citizen journalism. So once again, if you are interested in investing your time in this most important project, please see the WikiLeaks press release that I have linked in the description below. I expect we will see huge updates to the story as WikiLeaks continues its release, uh, and it is a tremendous amount of information to sift through. But who better to do it than those of us that want to reclaim our personal freedoms and return to constitutional values? So thank you for watching. I'd imagine I'll be talking about this in the coming week and definitely on my Sunday night podcast, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time, Beauty and the Beta. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Bye.